Okay, welcome. To our first uh, PPD documentation session of 2022, uh, I'm Peter, uh, I'm the program coordinator. Uh, on paper, in practice, that's the program <laughs> coordinator. Um, so, Estelle, thank you for organizing all of this. Uh, I'm sure you have met Estelle virtually by email. Uh, you will do so most probably in the months to come. There's no doubt in my mind. Today is, is an orientation, so we want to provide you with information, but also create the opportunity for you to ask those questions. That's still answer. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Estelle. For those connecting online, can you hear me clearly? Welcome to you as well. Yes, yes I can hear you. Yes, can hear you. you are in the privileged position of uh, enjoying a cup of tea and whatever else while we have the session, so enjoy that. Please, if you've got a, a question, just unmute yourself and shout because, uh, but it's still just, you can also send a chat, but uh, that's not the most effective in MS Teams. So the program is as follows. Uh, I'm going to say what the program is, and then um, the registrar is still, so is Shell in the room? Shell, are you here? Dr. Nagel, he is um, probably in the room, but he's just in a quick meeting with our manager. Wonderful. Okay. So, so uh, while we wait for Shil, I think I, I'm not going to waste any time. My colleagues, uh, the one who just walked in, they all got uh, things to attend to. So, Nadine, you also mentioned that you want to go first, if that's possible. So, I'm going to give the floor over to you. So this is to introduce you to the lecturers and the subjects they are responsible for. And Nadine uh, is the coordinator for practical theology and missiology. Uh, Nadine, uh, the floor is yours. Thanks so much, Peter. I'm, so I'm not coordinating practical theology and missiology with a separate colleague, um, Reverend David Mouton, who will do PTM. Um, I will simply do a portion of missiology. My other colleague, uh, Dr. Peter White, will will do the missiology part. But just to say to everybody, welcome and hello. I'm greeting you all from my home in retreat. Um, and for those online and for those at home, I hope you all feel very welcome. Uh, and thanks, Peter, for prioritizing me today. I have another meeting shortly, but I'll hang around for sure, as long as I can. So what's Thank really important to know and understand is that there is a module called Missiology. And within this module, we have two subfields, the one being Missiology and the one Community Development. Now, this has been a bit confusing for students over the years, um, but I just want to assure you that it is one module with two components. So as we are running the PG dip this year, and of course, uh, Dr. Nahal, and of course you'll be orientated on that, this module remains a single module. Um, they will be, it will be offered together, so the missiology and the community development component under the broad um, title missiology. Okay, so I teach theology and development or community development. Um, and I just want to share a little bit about what to expect in this module. Um, in terms of the year flow, this one comes towards, um, I think it is June, July, so a little bit later in the year. And interestingly enough, and I think Dr. White will talk a bit more about this, but this combined module is offered by two colleagues uh, who both have the surname of Polis, uh, Dr. Eddie Apollos, and then uh, Mr. Quentin Apollos. Uh, Dr. Eddie Apollos will be presenting the missiology component that Dr. White will speak a little bit more about. And then Mr. Quentin Apollos will be uh, presenting the community development side, which I will be talking about quickly. So let me just see if I can share my screen. Sometimes it's not so fun, all these uh, things. And let me just see if I can find it quickly and share it with you. Peter, are you able to see it there? Not yet, but we'll give it some time. It's 
So yes, we here. can. Please yeah. go ahead. Thanks so much. Okay, so you see there I've got missiology and then community development under it. Like I said, this is one part of a bigger module and it's going to be presented by Quentin Apollos. So community development is together with missiology and it's a four week module and two of the weeks will be dedicated to community development and then two weeks to missiology to make up one module which runs for a total of four weeks. So I will not be presenting this model uh, module Quentin or this part of the module Quentin will be doing that um, and of course this will be posted on Sunday in this presentation and closer to the time which is around mid-year um, of course you can start um, contacting Quentin. So in terms of the learning outcomes for the community development part of it, they're just some basic things. I know for those of you that have done the undergraduate, you have some of these foundations. Hopefully you would have received those from me. Um, but I also understand that there are many of you coming from outside theology or who have never done any modules in this particular subdiscipline. So basically we want to introduce you to the principles of community development. We want you to gain an understanding of the theological, the biblical foundation for the church's engagement in poverty and inequality. But ultimately, we, we want you to develop sort of a basic ability to analyze and evaluate what's going on in your church's context, general church's context in South Africa, and faith-based organizations. Those are NGOs, nonprofits, so that ultimately you can start thinking about how should we and how could we um, better engage as church and as Christians with regards to issues of poverty and inequality in our own contexts. And now, for some reason, this doesn't want to move. Oh, there we go. Okay. So some of the topics covered, like I said, basic community development principles. Uh, why must we talk about theology when we talk about development? Why must we talk about development and then talk about theology? Um, and so developing critical perspectives on a theology of development, what's hindering the church from engaging? How can we activate churches to engage with issues of poverty and inequality in our country, which are so, so certain at this particular time? And what are the key theological and practical issues that need to be addressed in order to engage churches? So we want you to think and reflect on your own context, also in light of the readings and the classes. Um, that you're going to be <clears throat> doing with, with Quentin Apollos. The prescribed readings would have been sent to you already in the handbook, so I'm just putting them there. You don't, I don't have to go through them in any great depth. Um, and in this particular sub-module, if you think that we're running this part of the module for two weeks and the other part of the module for another two weeks, at least for this section, you'll be able to see you have about one reading a day. That's not one book a day. <laughs> um, and we obviously want you to engage with your readings. And I know that the way that we want to um, engage students in this sub module, and I think in the module as a whole, is a lot of interaction, critical thinking, um, and engaging with the readings at this level. In terms of formal and assessments, it will be offered in a hybrid uh, format with live online lectures and some in-person lectures, which will also be offered online. Uh, and usually after hours in the evenings, because we know many of you do have day jobs, um, and so we'll be attempting that. And for this part of the module, there'll be one assessment, one online test, uh, but then you will also be um, evaluated in terms of class participation in things like discussion forums, class chats, um, and, and of course, presence in class, which will count towards your marks. Um, you'll obviously be orientated for those that see the word sunlit and go, what is that? Uh, you will be orientated on that. That's our uh, e-learning platform. Um, and a lot of the interaction, um, if not live with the lecturer, will also um, happen with the lecturer and students on that particular format or in MS Teams. Just Right, so I, I think this could be confusing, but just to say I've already had one person uh, mailing me and say, I want you to be my supervisor for my specialization, but they it looks like they hadn't yet started the qualification. So just a reminder, uh, please, you need to finish all your, your six 
um, other subjects before you come into your specialization. And I'm sure um, Dr. Nagel will tell you more about that. Uh, thanks, everybody. That's it for me. Um, and I know it's been very quick and I've spoken very uh, rapidly, but um, yes, I'm open for questions or I will just be around still, Peter, um, for a little while as well. I won't leave right now. But thanks Nadine, for having me first. Nadine, thank you so much. And uh, let me apologize. Uh, so, uh, 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 the, you know, that's why Stella is here, just to uh, rectify all the pro uh, mistakes I made. So David Vuitton is indeed the coordinator for PTM. That's and right. as you've heard, uh, uh, Professor uh, Nadine bowser toy she is uh, responsible for community development, which forms part of the uh, Michiology uh, uh, module. And Peter White, of course, uh, uh, does the Michiology part. So I I'm not sure, maybe we should, Intozak, are you still okay? Can, can we give Dr. David, the floor is yours. Thank you so much. Nadine, thank you so much yet again uh, for your presentation. Of course, of course. Okay, let, let, let's do so. David, okay. Yeah, uh, good, thank you. Um, good afternoon. Please, um, somebody's microphone is on, if you can. I'll mute your microphone to make it easier for you. Okay. Can you speak and uh, let me just see if 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 uh, those online can hear you? Hello. Hello. I think it's better. Perfect. Thanks. Um, there's a little bit of an echo still. Sorry, sorry, Dr. White. There's a little bit of an echo there still, but we can hear you. Okay. We can hear you, but it's not so clear. Yeah, just so keys to good. Good. Yes. Papita, can I use yours? The mic is fine here. I mean, so you can. Colleagues, we can't hear you currently. Yes, that, that's technology for you. Yeah, good afternoon once more. And um, um, I welcome you to today's orientation. Mine is going to be very brief. Um, already my colleague um, Nadine has presented whatever we are supposed to do as far as um, the missiology component of the program is concerned. So, um, as already said by Nadine, um, missiology has two major components as far as this program is concerned. The um, missiology aspects and community development. So, um, Nadine is the one handling the community development aspect and I'll be handling coordinating the missiology aspect of the program. Um, but um, maybe in your class you may not see me, like Nadine has said, we have two other colleagues who will be teaching in the class, but we will still be available for supervision and whatever uh, contact or information you may need from us. So please um, take note of it. And in this um, model, as we've said, it has um, missiology and community development components. And when it comes to missiology, we just want to introduce you to the theories and concepts of missiology. And don't forget, um, in this program, we can teach you everything missiology. We just want to give you 
some of the core components as far as missiology is concerned. So um, that is it. And we will shift a bit into the study of other religions and we'll be focusing on um, African indigenous religion, um, Christianity and Islam. And the reason why we will be introducing you to these um, three major religions is that um, let's not forget we, we, we live in a society where these three religions are the most dominant religions we have around us. Even though we are still thinking uh, through whether to also introduce students to um, aspect of um, Asian religion, Hinduism, but we will think about it. But we just want to focus on these three um, major religions. And when we talk of other religion, people still have this kind of mindset um, when it comes to, um, especially theology class. We, we don't teach other religions from a confessional perspective, no. We teach other religions from academic perspective. So we approach it for what we call um, um, phenomenology of religions. So please, you are not going to be converted, no. We just want to introduce you to some of the basic concepts so that you know how to deal with them. And I know that um, in as part of the documents you'll be using, we have this um, prescribed material called Missioner and Counterology. Um, it's very helpful as far as um, engaging with other religions is concerned. So you come across it um, as um, you go through this lecture. Um, we'll be having four weeks of lectures for, for missiology, two weeks will be for um, um, missiology, two weeks for community development. And um, within that two weeks, after the colleague will be teaching, when he's done with the two weeks of um, um, lectures, you have your test, which will be the first test, and then you also have one assignment. So when you put together missiology, the two components, you'll be having two assignments and two tests. So please take note of it so that you don't get confused. So at the end of the first two weeks, the one teaching missiology will conduct one assignment, one class test. And that of community development also will have one assignment, one test. So um, without putting them together, you have your marks for the model. So we just want you to take note of it and then to be delivered hybrid, face-to-face um, -face and online. We are also thinking how best we can record some of the lectures. So yes, we've discussed it and the colleagues are also ready to help us with that so that you can also catch up after um, the, the lecture period and so on. So the prescribed materials are already in there. So uh, in your, your program document, I, I know majority of you, you have it by now. So um, this is basically a few things I can talk about as far as the missiology aspect of this um, program is concerned. And you are also welcome to engage any of us um, in your research or whatever information you need clarity on. Thanks so much. So any questions? So we'll, we'll, we'll get to that to the, to the question part later. Yes. So uh, those of you that uh, dog, you can come forward so long. Um, I'm just wondering, in terms of those colleagues that need to leave, so David, if you are done, I think let's open the floor for just a, a question or two so that you could, can, can go in. Yeah. Okay, let me let me just take this off. Yeah, it's uh, kind of difficult to look at the screen and look at the, 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 the students. Uh, yeah, I, I struggle to sit and talk while I, I uh, teach. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is David Maton, and I'm with the Department of Practical Theology and Missiology. Uh, I'm the coordinator for the PG Dip program from our department side, but I'm also teaching uh, pastoral care this year, the pastoral care part. Now, you would have noticed in the, the booklet for PG Dip that uh, the practical theology component consists of four subdisciplines. Uh, so it consists of uh, liturgy and homiletics that you know which has to do with uh, your services and the liturgical uh, 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 actions that we do as part of our service and worship. 
then there is the church ministry part that has to do with uh, how do we conduct our business in church? How do we understand our communities? How do we interpret that? And how does that relate back to our ministry uh, so that it is an effective and a present ministry uh, uh, while we're busy there? So, so the idea with the church ministry model is really not to look at the specific programs and activities of a congregation specifically, but the role and the impact of congregations and ministries within the broader society. So you will be introduced to things like contextual analysis and those type of things on both micro and macro level. And the person responsible for teaching that part on, on church ministry is Professor Ian Liao. Uh, the person responsible for teaching the part on liturgy and worship or liturgy and uh, homiletics is uh, uh, Professor Gus Webber. Uh, that many of you might also know. So those are the two people responsible for, for teaching liturgy and, and uh, homiletics. Homiletics has to do with making sermons and preaching. Okay, and then the church ministry is Professor Ian Yao. Then the third sub-discipline that's included in the practical theology model module uh, is that of youth work. And uh, the in-house people responsible for, for youth ministry or youth work uh, teaching in, in that field is Professor Anita Kluter and Professor Shantiao Weber. Uh, they will not be responsible for teaching this year. They will be responsible for supervision for your research project, and we'll talk about that just now. Uh, the person that will teach the youth work module is uh, Dr. Sean Burrows. He's a minister uh, in, in the United Reformed Church, and he's on contract uh, with us uh, for this year. Then there's the fourth sub-discipline that is pastoral care. Uh, so that I'm teaching that uh, particular component of the module. And uh, many people come with the expectation that we will teach a lot of uh, counseling skills and, and, and those type of things. Uh, it's not really a practical oriented module or part of the module. What we try to do uh, within the postgraduate diploma, uh, as you may have heard already, is to create an opportunity for people who come from other fields other than theology to develop a solid foundation and understanding of theological concepts and how they operate and integrate with each other, but the relevance thereof also in broader society and how we make theology relevant to people out there in the world, not just to church people, but to the world. Okay, so, so the emphasis will not be so much on teaching counseling skills, but we will teach different foundational theories and concepts within pastoral care. Uh, we will also uh, look at certain dogmatic issues. Why do people suffer, for instance? How do we use scripture? How do we use prayer in, in pastoral care, uh, 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 situations where pastoral care is needed? And hence, you will notice it's not called pastoral care and counseling. Parcel case much, much more than just counseling. So the idea is to provide an opportunity for you uh, to develop a basic and a solid understanding of what parcel care entails. So those are the four sub-disciplines that we teach in the practical theology module. Now, you would have noticed that the reading is quite a lot for those of you who have already seen that, especially for parcel care. Uh, don't panic yet. Uh, so some of that reading will be optional. Uh, it is, it, it, it's kind of a, a difficult thing because we want to teach you, you know, the basics of the sub-discipline in the field. We want to give you a solid foundation, but we also have a moral and ethical obligation to shift our thinking in terms of what we teach. And here I'm specifically speaking of where does knowledge come from? Who gives authority to knowledge? So we have to include enough, uh, or we have to make enough effort to start thinking in terms of our own African resources and our own African knowledge as it developed over years and it is, and as it is becoming more prominent within not only in theology but all over in society and in the academic world. So hence, a lot of the stuff there you will see from African scholars. We need to think about that. We need to decolonize the way that we understand uh, the academy and, and, and knowledge, and not to say we throw away, which we consider not to be African. No, not at all. We work with that. It, 
both of both of those sources play an important role in how we understand and how we function as people in general, but specifically as people of faith and people who want to make a difference from a perspective of faith. Okay, I'm saying too much. I'm talking too much. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Now, uh, the, the practical theology module, like the others, will be offered over four weeks. Uh, fortunately, we are the first ones, you know. So we start in the week of 14 February, and then the last class or is the week of, I think, 11 March. So when we start off, we start off with church ministry. And the reason for that being a lot of the basic concepts of practical theology will be covered by Professor Danielle. Uh, then we move on to liturgy and homiletics. If I'm not mistaken, I just quickly go and have a look there. Uh, yeah, no, no, no. We go on to youth work. I'm sorry. We go to youth work on the week three. That's the week of 28 February to 4 March. It's liturgy and homiletics by Professor Webner. And then 7 to 11 March is uh, the week on pastoral care. Uh, now, when you have a look, the course framework. Uh, the cursus brief, Susan and Afrikaans said, the course framework will be sent to you within this week. So please take note that some of the lecturers chose to offer the lectures over three days to so two hours each. Uh, we have to work with certain hours because of the credit load of the module. And some offer the teaching over two days, meaning three hour sessions. So just take a note that what works for or what's been uh, uh, said about youth work does not apply to pastoral care, for instance. I know those two are different in terms of the days. So those will be communicated through uh, the uh, course framework during the course of this week. What should I say? Uh, just in terms of the assessment, and we'll explain that uh, on the, during the first lecture with Professor Nell, you will be expected throughout the four weeks to compile a journal, to make journal entries uh, of your own observations of congregations and leadership. You will have to speak to relevant leaders and people in your community. Uh, you will have to have a look at your own congregation's praxis, faith praxis, uh, in, in, in the community with reference to each of the four sub-disciplines. So with reference to church ministry, youth work, liturgy and homiletics, and pastoral care. That would be your first assignment that you will do. Your second assignment, you will make use of your journal observations as well as relevant theory that you have been taught through these four weeks uh, to give a detailed analysis of your own congregational practice. Now you're not observing anymore. Now you, 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 you observe and you compare that with what you have learned. You integrate those, you think critically, you reflect on that, and you provide feedback, you provide analysis of that reflection as part of an assignment. Uh, each of these will count 20% towards your final mark. And then your, your last assessment will be a written examination where you have the opportunity to provide an integrated and critical discussion based on knowledge and insights from the all sub-disciplines on a case study that will be provided for you. Now, if you, you, you will notice this is actually the same assignment building in, in terms of detail, in terms of critical analysis. Uh, and, and the idea is that uh, you realize and understand and practice the reality that none of what we teach here stand alone. Not Old Testament, not New Testament, not systematic theology, not practical theology, none of it stands alone. Okay, so, so, so the sooner you, especially those who come from a non-theological background, the sooner you, you realize that and you work according to that framework, the better it will be for you. And it's going to be challenging. It's going to be challenging. Because theology does not only work with knowledge, it works with understanding and it works with your faith. It works with the shifts in your faith and that is sometimes difficult and challenging. But I, I don't think, uh, Peter, that I should go into the detail of what will happen each week. Uh, so let me just make sure that I have covered everything. Yeah, I, I said, I made a comment about the, the prescribed material. Some of it will become op optional for, especially for pastoral care. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so in case I've missed it, I'm just going to read the module objectives again. It's a conceptual clarification of terminology within practical theology, a comprehensive systemic and integrated knowledge and understanding regarding the principles, 
the scope, the theories, the methodologies, epistemologies, and hermeneutics of practical theology, and a survey of recent scholarship with an emphasis on African scholarship concerned with the description, critique, and relevance of practical theology and its bearing on ministry. And lastly, for the enhancement of research skills for independent research from a hermeneutical perspective. Now, in terms of your research project, the requirement has been mentioned already uh, by Professor Bowser You finish your six modules and then you can do your research project. Uh, if I remember correctly, Estelle, it's, it's then a little bit over six weeks that they have left before submission if we wait till the last module. Okay. Whenever they wanted to be. Yes. Okay, so, so so if you are clear on the area that you want to specialize in, then you can start. Uh, if you want to specialize in any of the sub subdisciplines of practical theology, uh, you write me an email. Say, I, I think I want to do a research project in church ministry. I will connect you with whoever is available. I want to do a project in youth work. I will connect you with whoever is available. So you write me an email. And in the course uh, framework, you will also have the details of Ms. Bonita Rubain, our admin within practical theology and missionology. So you always CC her when you have a query about uh, uh, the PG dip for practical theology. And if it's something that you need to address to her, then you CC me so that we can just keep tabs on the responses and make sure that whatever it is that you need is attended to. I think that's that's it. Uh, thanks, thanks everyone. I hope everyone heard me on the other side of the screen. Oh, thank you so much, uh, and Peter Nadine. Once again, thank you so much. Is, is there any subject-specific question? We will have a Q and A uh, later on. Uh, you can ask any question, but uh, I just want to uh, give an opportunity for for, for my colleagues who are still in the room. Do you have any subject-specific question at this point? Okay, if, if not, uh, thank you again uh, uh, for, for providing us with, with valuable information, uh, uh, David, uh, Peter and Nadine. Is there, okay. uh, so usually we say the best for last, uh, and with best I mean New Testament, but this is an exception, of course. Um, uh, uh, the floor is yours. He's the chair of uh, uh, all the New Testament. So he's going to use, I mean, uh, the Old is also important, not to take anything away, of course, but we've got Jesus, uh, New Testament. I'm not sure that you know everybody. Just like my name is Boss. Um, uh, maybe I should show that. Yes. Just Peter is educated in the seventh year economy on paper. The real <laughs> I'm the chair on paper. The real chair. Well, <laughs> I'm not going to tell you much, and I'm not going to too much. All I want to do. For a reason I don't know. Uh, people complain much about biblical theology. <laughs> but, but I think what happens, people come with their preconceived ideas and then they become rigid. That's where the problem 
They, they can't hear me. Yeah, maybe if you can just stand Sit. closer. To yeah, me. you can stand, but just yeah. closer to the design. <clears throat> uh, I'm sorry, I'm just uh, giving some information about the Bible. In, 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 in our department, we, we interpret the Bible. So I'm not going to give much administrative information, but I just want to provide a, a perspective. I was just saying people complain that the Bible is difficult, and I think it's because they come with their preconceived ideas and become rigid. We, in this department, we interpret the Bible, but not just interpreting, we've got a specific way of interpreting the Bible, which focus on profound well, <clears throat> responsible to accountable three theological interpretations. So when I say profound, I mean we are critical. We don't just read the Bible and, and swallow. We ask questions. We ask questions about God. We ask questions about Jesus. And sometimes not comfortable questions. So, and we, we follow methods, uh, scientific methods. Uh, you, you know, sometimes when, when, when you ask something uncomfortable about God, uh, the atmosphere changes and everybody is uncomfortable. <laughs> but that, that's what we do. So uh, it will help if you start knowing that if, at some stage you question God. Act as profound and uh, also responsible. Uh, well, when I say responsible, I mean we, we don't just read the Bible the way we like. You know, we try to keep an academic sound. So we are responsible to the academic community. You know, we interact with other scholars, you know, and try to read the Bible at an acceptable academic sound. So that's what I mean by responsible. So you don't just see something in the Bible and you think it should be like this. And you must exchange with, with, with other academics. Also accountable. Um, we are also aware that you are not operating in a, in a, in a vacuum in a There is a church community. As much as we are responsible to the academic community, we are also accountable to the church community. So there is exchange between us and the academia and the church. So we, we don't ignore the church and we, 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 we the church is just part of our you know uh, interaction. And then lastly the profound accountable, responsible, accountable, theological interpretation. Lastly, theological. We, we also interpret the, <clears throat> the Bible to understand about God and society. So issues of justice are issues that we also take note of. And we try to understand what is in people's lives. So, God is central in people's lives. So, you, you can't just understand God separately from people and how people live. So, that's how we read the Bible. We focus on responsible accountable theological interpretation of the Bible. 
So uh, it, it will help if from now you try to, to get that perspective so that you, you don't bring maybe your, your doctrinal. Uh, you know, the, the Bible, the Old Testament is a, is a Jewish Bible for that matter, it's not a Christian Bible. So sometimes people want to, I understand, want to read the, 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 the Holy, uh, Holy Spirit and they want to see Jesus in the Old Testament. But the truth is, uh, the Old Testament are texts that, you know, deal with the time before Christ. So, it's okay to, 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 to come with your interpretation, the Christian interpretation, but that should be interpretation. <clears throat> so, um, we've got two people that are going to be teaching Old Testament, Professor Yonker, He's not here, uh, yet. He's, in, he's in Germany, but uh, he, will, uh, he will prescribe, he prescribes a book uh, by, by, by Schmidt Conrad Schmidt. The book is about that. That's also important to, you see, the perspective that I gave you will help you to be able to read a book like Conrad Schmidt's book. He, he, he deals with the history of the literature of the Old Testament. So already that can be problematic to some if you talk about the history of the literature. Literature was not written in the same period, in the same context, you know, and that kind of stuff. But uh, I shouldn't spend more time now. I think this detail should be enough. Um, Fulola is the other um, lecturer that will be teaching the other two books on Old Testament, Doctor, or it's actually Doctor Olojede. Uh, I will give her um, um, a few minutes, and then Peter will just talk about New Testament. Uh, I hope I can be heard online. Okay, so yeah, I hope I can be heard. Uh, can you just give us an indication? Those connecting online, can you? We can hear you, Fanola. Okay, Wonderful. thank you, Nadine. Uh, right. Uh, so, as my uh, colleague. Uh, Zaki has said, uh, Old Testament is uh, a module that is in three parts for this for this particular module, and it will be taught uh, together with uh, the uh, who will be taking the first and second, the four-week block module, and every uh, online site. So Professor will take the first part of the module, and that will be on uh, Old Testament. Uh, narratives, the perspective in the narratives, so you will learn about the history of the composition, how we arrive at the text and all that. Yeah, the second part will be on wisdom literature. So for, for, for the Seyonka, you're going to be reading a book by Schmidt, as you already heard, uh, which uh, has to do with the literary history of the Old Testament. Then the second part uh, will be on wisdom literature, so we are going to be taking three major purposes of the New Testament, and that's the narrative, the piece of literature, which is comprised of uh, the main books, Job and the uh, Psalm and uh, Ecclesiastes and Proverbs. So there are some uh, wisdom texts in Psalms, so we are going to be taking those for the three major books of wisdom literature. So we are going to be taking those three major books by Psalm and Valentine. So the, the last part of the module uh, will be the prophetic uh, literature. Uh, prophetic literature is going to be a uh, really book by Stuman and King. Very interesting book because it combines both uh, uh, the historical, critical stuff, 
smart clothing, but it's written in a very readable modern style, and uh, that you don't enjoy very much. So, with this module, you're going to be doing a lot of independent reading, and uh, the assessment uh, will be in three parts. Your attendance in class is part of it, and then you're going to have a book report. That is for all those three books, you're expected to write uh, a kind of uh, summary of the understanding of it, uh, what you got out of it. Uh, so uh, that book report is, is very central to your assessment. And then, of course, the, there will be a written test uh, at the end of it. So those are the three major ways that you will be assessed. There will be group uh, interactive session, uh, uh, both in class and in the class. Uh, but then, the, 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 the text of the Old Testament is a bit difficult as you have had. Uh, difficult because we tend to uh, read from Christian perspective, so uh, most people are Christian. And, uh, but we read from the Old Testament, not from the New Testament backwards. You get it. Uh, so you, you have to read from the Old Testament. Then later, you know, when you get to church, you can now read forward, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but for this module, we just stick, we stick with text. And for the prophetic literature, uh, we'll look at the three major uh, prophets, and that's uh, Isaiah and uh, Jeremiah and Ezekiel. Yeah. But uh, the books that you're going to be reading, some of them you're not reading the entire book, we just choose portions for you to, uh, to read. And there will be other books uh, that, that can simplify things for you, which we will recommend. So if you have questions, as we have heard from both uh, Peter and our uh, uh, HOD, uh, this is the real powerhouse. Uh, in the department. So, <laughs> so that better be your friend. <laughs> so, if you have any difficulty, just go to her. She will sort you out. But we can have uh, also interact on some of that. Uh, I'm sure as you go, go on with your orientation, you will learn about the Sunland. And uh, you can post your questions there. You will get all your uh, readings there. The books will be available in the library. You put them on the research section, so the section, so you can go there and uh, and read for a few hours or make photocopies of the portions that you uh, that you need. The Old Testament is interesting. You will enjoy it. And uh, the the aim is that at the end of it, if you want to continue with the Old Testament, you would have had the basic skills, uh, critical skills. Uh, we have had to do critical stuff, not just uh, uh, the kind of things you do in church. And right, you, you know, you can be comfortable with me because I'm a pastor. So uh, as you have, <laughs> yeah, we do responsible reading. We do responsible reading. The aim is not to destroy your faith, not at all. The aim is just to give us critical tools that we need uh, to engage with the text. So when we have an understanding. Okay, uh, yes, so the old New Testament says this, this, these texts are given by the inspiration of God, but we are able to see the real human beings behind the text and the, the world of the text, the context in which the text uh, was written. So, all these things help us actually to be better pastors of this reality. So, uh, that's basically what we do uh, in the four weeks. Uh, for Sionka, we take the first part, uh, first week, I'll take the next two weeks, and then we'll continue on the next week. If you have questions, the table is just here. Yeah. So, but uh, I'm sure Peter will tone down whatever the Old Testament guys have said. No. Uh, you can see he represents Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, th thanks for the opportunity. Uh, can you hear me online? So I just want to say to you, 
Thank you, David. For those of you who start reading the Bible, uh, if you start with the New Testament, not a problem at all. There's enough explicit citations that will take you to the to the Old Testament. <laughs> um, no, all jokes set aside. I've got two colleagues uh, in New Testament, uh, Prof. Uh, Jeremy Finn and Prof. Marius Nell. In terms of teaching this module, uh, I will be teaching the module. Uh, Professor Jeremy Finn will be teaching the module, and Mr. Mbana will be teaching the module. In, in fact, he will be defending his uh, PhD, uh, I think, next week. So, um, We've got three books, apart from uh, the New Testament, of course. <laughs> apart from the New Testament. We will be going through three books, and all three of us will be focusing on a specific book in the, during the three weeks. It's introduction. Uh, this year, we will be emphasizing this strong emphasis on hermeneutics. That will be the dominant focus of I would say this year's approach to the New Testament module in the And of course, a general introduction to, to the New Testament. We will not be uh, uh, going into um, the New Testament itself in terms of the Gospels, Pauline literature, etc. Uh, but it's an overview. We will be using scripture uh, uh, a lot. So I think I don't want to say anything more than that. Uh, you will be getting a module framework, all the assessment, everything is in there, um, apart from the PG booklet. So uh, if I may, you know, questions, you know, if you've got specific uh, subject questions, you, you're welcome to ask, but let's leave it if there's enough time to ask a question. I want to give the, the room and space for systematic theology and ecclesiology. Yes, there's, a, there's one person clapping. <laughs> uh, Dion, you're welcome to either stay or come forward. Thank you so much. Professor Dion Foster, he's the coordinator. Oh, no, it's not. I'm not, I'm not, but uh, <laughs> hello, colleagues online, uh, and welcome to uh, everyone who's here. Uh, systematic theology is where everything lands up. <laughs> That's where we discover what, what we believe and why we believe it. And uh, all of the things that they've taught you are very helpful in bringing you to that point. Um, colleagues, we, we're going to, uh, our two co-ordinators are online, uh, Dr. Liesel Hubert, who is responsible for ecclesiology, uh, that's church history and church polity, and Dr. Nadia Marais, who is responsible for uh, coordinating systematic theology and ethics. So um, they are online. So Peter, I'm going to ask uh, Liesel if you would uh, jump straight in. I am here just in case there is a technical issue, but there she is. She's currently in Wellington. Uh, where it is hotter than Hades, eh? <laughs> Fenton's weather. If you think uh, Wellington is hot, try not believing in Jesus. It's getting hotter. Liesl, over to you. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? I don't know how to work this. Speak. Just speak again for us, Liesl. We're just going to okay, make you a bit you louder. Oh. Um, plug it in. Just plug it in there. Speak for us now. Is it better? Is die ding so on here? So you'll have to just unplug that, Peter. And let's just go here. Just one second, Liesl. We're just going to give you some, some volume. We want to hear church history. There we go. That sounds like we've got some power. Uh, speak to us again. Is it now? Can you hear me? Uh, wait, we're going here. Just one second. Uh, speak to us now. OK. Are you now saved? <laughs> No, we still can't hear you that well. Give us one second. <laughs> Can you choose the Dell, the other Dell one? Let's see if they... Try again. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah, you don't work me. Uh, try once more, Liz. Sorry, man. Okay. Can you, you hear go, me that? now? It's a bit better. Okay. Can you hear okay? Okay, church history is normally louder than that, but go for it. Thanks, Liesl. Okay, if the um, 
if I'm a bit blurry, it's because I'm sitting next to an open window for survival. <laughs> so welcome I'm, everybody. I'm sorry I'm not can't be there, but I'm busy with the MDIFs in Wellington, teaching them something about spirituality. Um, so I'm responsible for the ecclesiology module, um, which is, as Dion said, two parts, church history on the one side and um, church polity um, um, on the other side. So um, I looked at the title table and saw we've got the, a questionable um, privilege to have our four blocks over three long weekends. You know, we've got a lot of long weekends and public holidays coming up in, in, in April and May, and that's where my block is. So <laughs> um, I would like to plan better, but in any case. So what I have to do is just to give you a very broad overview in four weeks of, of the basic chronology of, of church history and traditions globally, as well as um, South African church history. Um, as well as helping you to locate your own denomination within these broader, within these broader perspectives. Um, so we're going to do what they call a bird's eye view because it's impossible to do all of history in such a short time. Um, I also would like to to to. Uh, um, interact with you about why history is important, um, what sort of methodologies do we use when we um, write history. And this course is not going to have a test or an exam um, because for me it's important that you must be able to learn to write well. So to write an essay, to be able to, to argument, to give your opinion. So we're just going to write critical essays on specific events in history. Um, and yeah, I can't say much more, but I, I, I think you will enjoy it. Um, I mean, we all come from somewhere and um, I hope to see you soon. I don't think there's anything else, Dion. Lisa, maybe you can oh, just yes, say a little something about, about, maybe ju just say something before that about uh, the two Gonzales books and oh, then yeah, the yeah. choice uh, um, at the end. Because, because we know from the past that some of some of the students that do the PG dip already did a BTH. And if you did a BTH, you would know Gonzales um, because that's the prescribed books for church history uh, right through. Um, so we thought that if you, we've got two sets of prescribed books. Those that did not do a BTH um, will do the Gonzales, Gonzales books and, and some South African church history books. And those who did the BTH and are well um, versed in Gonzales, there would be alternative readings from McCulloch and his history of Christianity um, so that there would be other reading material for you. Um, so you will see on the booklet that you'll get these 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 two alternative groups of of reading material, depending if you're new to theology or if you already had done some church history in the past. Um, the, so it would be three weeks church history. Um, one week we do up to the Middle Ages, and next week we do Reformation up to today, and then you you will probably here will be flying like this. And then we do South African church history, and then the last week is a basic introduction to, to church polity. What is the role of church polity? What's the theology behind church polity? What's the rich history of church polity? So very basic introduction to, to church polity. Um, so there would be quite a lot of reading material, and then we will meet two sessions. One session in the beginning of the week, sort of as an orientation, and another session at the end of the week just to bring things together and maybe have a presentation as such. Thank you. Any questions? Because I have to go now. I've, I've got students. So maybe if these questions, questions, I can ask now. Is that okay, Peter? Any specific questions before Liesl has to go? Dr. Hubert, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Okay, stay, stay cool there.
Okay. By the way, do you know what church polity is? Church law. Who can be ordained in your church? Only women? Women and men? Uh, what happens if someone steals the money of the church? What happens if the church wants to buy a property? How does that happen? What's the relationship between the church and the state? Can the state say that you may not worship at 9 a.m. on a Sunday? So, so church law, church order, church polity uh, traces the development of if we believe certain things to be true, how do we enact them in relation to our specific churches? How do we deal with issues of discipline? How do we deal with doctrinal disputes? All of that. It's incredibly, incredibly interesting. So uh, you might even read the Bible to figure some of that out, which is great. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, colleagues, now we've got um, Dr. Nadia Marais, um, and she is uh, our, one of our systematic theologians, and she's going to introduce you to uh, systematic theology and ethics. Thanks, Nadia. Thanks so much, Dion. Uh, I hope my video and sound is all right. We hear you, but we don't see you. But hearing is is uh, is half, half the way there. So if you if you don't get your video working, don't worry too much. Yeah, for yeah, some well, reason it's, it's not working well. today. It's been working before. Well. It's gonna work tomorrow, but uh, maybe we can proceed like that. Sorry about that. That's perfect. Go 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 right ahead. Thank you. So, uh, hi everyone, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Nadia Mare. Sorry you can't see my face right now, but it is in the uh, PGDIP information booklet. You've met um, our department chair and colleague, Professor Dion Foster. Uh, and I can perhaps just mention that in systematic theology within our discipline group, um, we have a further two colleagues, Professor Robert Fosloe and Dr. Sipo Malkoto. So, we are four colleagues in systematic theology. Uh, I am, however, the, the coordinator or the contact person uh, for any questions you might have uh, within the, the PG dip. So I was thinking of covering about five or six things uh, just very briefly. Um, a first important thing you would have seen in the in the PG dip uh, booklet that the, um, the dates this block for systematic theology is the last of your taught blocks. Um, and the dates will be from 19 September to 14 October. We have four weeks. Uh, so I think um, just, just to make a note of that, um, our reading list uh, is available on page uh, 28 and 29 of the, the PGDIP information booklet. We work with two primary sources, and I was thinking of sharing my screen, but obviously that now might be a problem. Uh, just to show you the covers of the two books, um, but the links are included also in the information booklet, so you can just follow up there. So very basically, we uh, deal with systematic theology in this course in terms of two blocks or two subdisciplines, namely dogmatics and ethics. Uh, so the, the dogmatics dealing with Christian doctrine um, and, and ethics. So we have two books allocated to each of these two focuses. Uh, namely for dogmatics or the focus on Christian doctrine, we will be reading Daniel Migliori's Faith Seeking Understanding. Migliori is an American Reformed theologian, uh, and the book is available in the library. For those who um, who want to sort of who are, really have an interest in, in dogmatics and systematic theology, uh, I would just mention it's not a bad idea to perhaps consider buying this book um, as well. It's a, a really great, really cool book. So that's the one source that that you will be dealing with extensively in this uh, course. Um, and then our second prescribed uh, book that that um, you must read um, is a book by Robin Lovin uh, entitled Christian Ethics and Essential Guide. Now, Robin Lovin um, is a Methodist <laughs> like Professor Forster. Uh, also from the States, um, and, and this is also a wonderful book that just sort of, I think, brings together some key themes. Um, yeah, so, so these will be our two primary sources that we work with in this uh, block. In terms of assessments, um, we will make available a detailed module framework later in the year, keeping in mind that this block only starts the 19th of September. Um, but at this point, we uh, we want to work um, with one exam 
and one written assignment. So that will in all probability be uh, the, the manner in which you will be assessed. I can, however, now already say it is a really, really good idea to now already obtain these um, these sources, whether by um, checking them out from the library or buying the books or however, to start reading because the reading really takes up a lot of time and it's well worth spending some quality time with these uh, two books. So uh, before we, we kick off the course in, in September and uh, conclude in October. So um, it is a good idea to, to get started on that. Uh, so I mentioned the module framework will be av available later uh, in the year. We will make it available on SunLearn. Um, I know you've already heard of this, um, as well as any other information that you may require. So typically, uh, we also make available some uh, tips for preparing for, especially for the exam, um, as well as some guidelines in terms of for written assignments around plagiarism, how to avoid that, that kind of thing. So please keep an eye on uh, SunLearn and the systematic theology section uh, in particular. Uh, just the last word then, all of this pertains to the A part of this program that you, um, I'm sure that you, you already are aware of, that you will complete uh, six modules of 10 credits each, this is half of the, the PG dip. For the B part of the program, which um, consists of 60 credits, um, in systematic theology, if you are interested in specializing in systematic theology, please feel free to, to contact me. You can send me an email. My uh, email address is in the, the PGDIP information booklet. Um, we will then allocate a supervisor based on your uh, research interests or a particular conversation or topic that you, you uh, are interested in pursuing for this part of the, the specialization. And uh, just to say that what you can expect for the B part in systematic theology uh, is an oral exam. Typically, we, we finish this off before we proceed to the, the assignment. But so firstly, an oral exam, of six books, we compile a reading list based on the topic or the, the, um, yeah, the focus um, also of your assignment, the topic that you're interested or the question that you're interested in. Um, so an oral exam of six books, followed by a written assignment of about 50 pages that you then uh, will submit on, on SunLearn. Uh, so that's more or less the, the I think, the, you know, logistical, practical guidelines for the B part. But as for your interests and questions, um, yeah, we, we don't work with the set reading list. Um, so if, if there is anything that you feel this is something that within systematic theology, I'm interested in pursuing further, I want to specialize in the subject, uh, please um, uh, send me an email, we'll take it from there. Um, yeah, it would be wonderful to welcome you also within our department. So I think that's everything, but I will be here for the question session as well. So if there are any questions, thank you. Thanks, Nadia, for uh, for helping us there. I see there's a hand raised. So um, we see your hand. We'll we'll come. So this uh, just we, just before we get to the the question, um, we still need uh, the, the the registrar's office to to yeah. So so that, that we need to do. I don't know if if Hila, do you want to you want to to share something, and then. A, uh, uh, importantly, the, we want to go through the schedule and then, of course, allow for the main Q and A. But Hila, before you come, can uh, uh, whoever raised his or her hand, please, uh, the floor is yours. Um, hi, Dr. Nafu. Yes, uh, hi. Uh, I think I, think I missed I when Dr. Nadia. I just want to, with regards to the. Will they be in Sunday or will they be hard copy in the library? So, so just yeah, just to say that the two books for systematic theology, um, that's Robin Lovin, the ethics book, and Daniel Migliori both have electronic copies available. The links are in the um, in the module framework. Um, and there are also paper copies. I think there are about six copies of each which are on short load. So there are plenty of copies. Uh, Hela can, can answer that, but you will have access to those on, uh, uh, on online once you've got your uh, username and password.
Thank you. I love it, please. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm just going to uh, introduce you. Um, my name is Ella Marie. I'm the faculty librarian for Faculty of Theology. Um, we've got our library just downstairs, and you're more than welcome to visit us. Now, my job was in this module is to help you to access and get to your reading material. The first thing I want to say is please, I might have, say, two copies of Lovin's book in a paper copy. And if you are very, um, some of the theologians like only the paper, I only got two copies. Guys, you're about 100 plus on the course. Please buy your own because um, you are postgrad students and those students at the library may have the books up to three months. So if you can imagine when are you going to get the book eventually. So please uh, consider getting your own copies. Um, the, the places where you can get your books are listed in the, in the program of the postgrad. Um, course uh, on your uh, it, it's online available as well so you'll see there are at times where I've put the article available you can download that providing you put in your username and your card in some cases we only have books I'm trying to look at those cases in terms of possible available ebooks but in some cases, I'm afraid we're not going to get uh, ebooks at all. Uh, Daniel Lowe's books, unfortunately, no e copies that we know of available to a library. Okay. So the best would be um, work with your study, work with your um, lecturers in the various disciplines and see maybe they've got access to e copies because they may have access due to the summer environment. Okay, they may make it uh, available there. From the library side, I can only give you access to my ebook and my paper, paperback book. Okay, so you're going to work with that. And in some cases, there is the question of the book is not available yet at the library. Um, we are having issues with um, customs overseas in Amsterdam, all the uh, places where the books are at the moment because of COVID. So we're looking at a six month to a nine month delay in getting new paper book. Okay. Amazon.com, however, are very quick because that's air freight. Okay. So if you do it through Amazon.com or Loot, you can get copies of the book. Here, Nell's book, Together in God's Theatre, it's electronically available, downloadable at CLF, um, CLF website in Wellington. You pay the one, I think, 230 rand, and you can download the complete book. That's your copy for it. So that's the best you can do. The library as institution may not have an ebook copy because our system doesn't support their soft sell. So we cannot have a copy available. So please get your own copy and use it as in, in that way. That's the only way we can work. They, um, some of um, the publishers' uh, databases, software, doesn't match out, so we don't have access. Okay. So, but you're welcome to contact me anytime if you have an issue with accessing material. Um, or an issue of accessing articles. Remember when you download articles from the website, which is on some search, make sure you put Adult Acrobat 11. Make sure that you have it. 
because that's how it works. If you're lucky enough to have H, Microsoft H, you can use it. Otherwise, uh, Firefox and Chrome will also work. Um, but sometimes if the one doesn't work, why the other one? Okay, but just make sure your software on your um, device is up to date. Uh, for, uh, especially for Adobe Acrobat, because that's where your articles are done. Uh, on the ebooks, you're wondering now, how am I going to read an ebook online? Okay, we do subscribe to okay, a copy of the ebook, one person at a time, access sometimes three, sometimes many, depending on the cost of the book. So how it's going to work, you're going to sign in and then you have the option to copy paper. You have the option to download chapters, but it's more or less a quarter of the book's page. So if your book is 200 pages more or less, you're looking about that 50 pages which you can download. Okay. And the other thing is just to remind you, don't try to download this part, this month, next month, the other one, that, that um, they will pick it up and they will block you. Okay, so first rule is try to get the book yourself, um, the best one. If you're not in that, cannot do that, read online. Okay, our system is available 24-7 and as I say, you have the option of downloading some chapters, at least on the you want. Copy and paste, um, it's only a limited few pages you can do to copy and paste, but they do allow you. It depends on if it's EBSCO host or one of our other, other platforms. So that's the way we work. Because some of you might be further away from outside of Stellenbosch, you are allowed to register as a distant student of campus students. And therefore, you can contact Anna Marie Eagleton and you can send me an email. I'll send the details to you. What she's going to do is go, she's going to support you. Um, and you may have whatever books you're taking out. Uh, for a longer period, not two weeks, I think it's four weeks, to give you more time. So if you're outside of Stellenbosch, you can become an off-campus student. One note on that, you will be responsible for any postage of packages, okay? Um, and she will assist you as far as possible. If you're working just outside Stellenbosch, say Cape Town, Wellington, we will still register you as off campus, but we won't post things to you. You will need to come into Stellenbosch. Or you can ask um, if it's uh, something you need now that we can email in. in so, and that's um, the libraries. Um, the links are in, in your program. So, please link on there. Look at the live, uh, theology lab guide. Take some time to read, and if you feel you want to ask me something and you feel, hey, this sounds stupid, please don't feel that way, ask. Because there's a lot of library speak on the website, and um, many of you have been out of academics for a long time, so ask if you don't understand. They are, we are between me and Anna Marie, we will be able to support you. And if you feel you need some training or backup, I can do team training. Um, if you want to connect from home, I can do that. You make a, a day and a time with me and we do it online if it's better. If you want to come in, you're also welcome. Um, the library at the moment, we can take about 25 uh, persons in the library, um, but you can let me know beforehand and then you can assist. And you're more than welcome.
come and visit our library. Spread out and get comfortable with your home for the next two years. Absolutely. That's all. That's where you're going to be between the library and the cafeteria. That's where you're going to be. Um, if I come back February, I think. Anyway, so we are there for you. Um, my colleagues, Teresa and Anna Marie, our head librarian is Bula. Uh, she's only, only there on alternate day. So anything you need. Um, if you want to make copies, remember as soon as you're registered, download your printing credits. Otherwise, we won't be able to assist you with cash. We only deal with cards. Um, so you will need to make sure you've got enough printing credits so that you can copy. We do have a scanner available where you can scan to your email if you wish to. Um, we have a separate uh, computer that does that. If you want to do that, I can show you how to do it. It's easy enough and then you can scan all your material in and send it to your email or even to your memory. So don't be limited in terms of where do I get this. Um, tell us what you need and how can we. Any questions at this moment? Me and Estelle work hard at the end of December to get your office. <laughs> there are two days not stop. So if there are any mistakes in there, we apologize. It was before Christmas, but let us know. Yeah. Okay, I might also just um, mention the importance of um, academic referencing. Uh, this is a perennial problem. Uh, hey, and there are experts to be able to help you to figure out how do I reference a YouTube video? How do I reference a newspaper article? How do I reference a journal article? A book? Don't ever reference Wikipedia, please. Um, you can read that at night, but never use it in your essays. So that, they will be able to help you to do that. Uh, because remember, if you don't get that right, you could either fail your subject or you could uh, be found guilty of plagiarism. If you used someone's work and not told us that it's their work, then you're pretending like it's yours. So please, colleagues, for many of us, we haven't been doing academic work for some years. Here are your experts. They will help you, please. Thanks, Theo, for that. On the library lookout, there's a page which says reference. Okay. On that, it will give you Stellenbosch Harvard. That's your card, Stellenbosch Harvard. You can click on there, it will give you all the formats you're working with. Okay. The other thing is we've got reference managers. That's software that will assist you in doing the right thing and doing the right format. Now that's Mendeley and uh, Zotero. Zotero. Okay, depending on what, how you work, you're going to like Mendeley or you're going to like Zotero. Mendeley has the benefit that they, you can link to other people doing the same thing. It's got the social media uh, accent there. Zotero is, is more straightforward doing it. There's not much. You can refer there back, you can refer there to other researchers, bibliographers and stuff on that one. But Mendeley is more into that social space. But if you're more practical, Zotero is straightforward. And what it means to you, it sounds like a lot of work. It's really not. While you're doing what you're doing, you're writing an essay, you're writing a report, you put your references on Zotero or Mendeley. And the magic happens when you're done. One click. Guys, one click. And it's it. Alphabetically, all that you need to do is check your page numbers, your commas, your full stop, and your spaces and your capital letters and logo. That's all you do. No stress. There's no stress. You do it from the beginning. And you're only in PG now. You might go further. 
you already got sources on your list that you can go back to. So that's why those reference managers are, they can keep things together for you. Okay, so and on there is also um, um, the, uh, how do you search for articles? How do you search for books? What is an ebook? There's places where you can look at how do we access it? Um, what do I do this? What do I do? And the other thing is also look on the library guide. There are a little window on the homepage training, smart researcher training. Now, those are sessions that's um, freely available to you. You can learn on how to do mean the lab. You can learn how to do a literature review. You can learn how to use Sunlit. Those are webinars online. So you sit at home, you watch for an hour and a half, and you can post questions to the presenter. And that's from our library store. So it does that. So all the places you can get information on. Yes, so um, and if you feel sometimes you, you're not seeing it, email me so that they can give you a link. But don't be scared of this whole thing of the literature. It is available. Um, we must just see if it gets to you. Okay. Any questions? Where is it that we find these webinars? It's on the main, on the landing page of the Lipart, on the home page, right in the middle block, the last block. It says smart, hashtag smart researcher. And those are really free of charge and they do sometimes make recordings of it so that you can go back. You're more than welcome. Please come and visit us in the line. You meet our colleagues and get your space for you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks, Ayla. Thanks, Ayla. Um, I'm going to give an opportunity. Uh, you most probably by now made contact with the registrar. So I would like them to just uh, you know, share a few thoughts. So the floor is yours. Shivan, are you still with? Wonderful. I am. Um, I do not. Well, thank you so much. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, everybody. I hope that you can see and hear me quite clearly. Um, I'm going to proceed. So uh, there's just a few things that I want to highlight. The first is the 25th of February is the absolute last day that we can accommodate registration. For many of you that are here today, you've already been registered and then there are some of you that haven't been registered. One of the things you have to pay attention to is the last day for registration. Like I said, it is the 25th. Also, the fact that I cannot support you if you are an international student until your pre-registration um, blocks have been lifted. So you have to go through the international office and their pre-registration checks before you can be registered with me. OK, once you've completed that process, you may contact me. Estelle has sent you an email and said that you are welcome to register me, that you are welcome to be registered with me. This is for the rest of you. Some of you have done so. If you haven't yet done so, please send me an email. Um, you don't need to come into the admin A building and register with me in person. You are not also able to register yourself online. It's a fairly quick and easy process. Just pop me an email. I need it in writing that I have permission to register you on, that I may do so on your behalf, and I will email you a proof of registration. The following is specifically related to new students. If you have never registered for the PGDT program before, and this is your first time in 2022, and you have already been registered, please contact me and confirm that you want to be registered as a full-time or part-time student. This is only applicable to new students. If you have not yet been registered and you still have to be registered, 
when you email me to be registered, please indicate to me if you are doing your program as a full-time student or as a part-time student. For my returning students, this is not applicable to you. You will be registered on the old program as per usual, and we'll just register you for the modules that is still outstanding on your course or not, okay? This is only applicable to brand new students to the program. Um, if you want to make changes or amendments to your program, you want to do anything to your course, you will contact either myself or Mr. Knallison, but mostly me. Um, my details are in the outline as um, issued to you by Estelle. You can contact me and we can amend your program. Now, when I say amend your program, please note that uh, you are supposed to be registering for 120 credits, okay? You will register for your program, which is 120 credits in the specialization of your choice. That's practical theology and missiology, systematic theology, or um, Old and New Testament. You choose what is your specialization or your area of specialization or your focus. That program is 120 credits. Your sub modules equate to 10 credits each. And so you'll do six mini modules and then you'll do your 60 credits research module. You need permission to register for that. You can't just register for that. So you'll do your mini modules first. I call them mini modules, may not be the technical term, but you'll do your 10 credit modules first. And so when you get your proof of registration, it may seem confusing as to why are the extra subjects here that doesn't look like it's part of your program. It definitely is. You are registered for your program, which is 120 credits, and then your modules, which are who, which are 10 credits each. And depending on how you are registered, you'll either be doing all six now, or you'll be doing three or two, depending on how your program is structured. Okay, so just to clarify on that, um, it's not a separate subject. It's not a separate subject that's 120 credits or a separate module. It's your program code and the modules you are registered for will equate to 120 credits. OK, so again, the last day for registration is the 25th of February. Please email me. I can register you remotely and then send you a proof of registration. Changes or amendments to your program I can do throughout the course of the year. I can do throughout the course of the next two months before the last day of February um, and throughout the course of the year. So you can please let me know if you want to change your focus from PTM to STE, depends on you. And um, yes, if you are a returning student and you have fees outstanding, I don't have authority to override that block. You'll have to make sure that student fees can support you so that I can register you. Uh, this is for our returning students, obviously. And so I think from my end, Dr. Nafal, I think I've covered everything that I need to cover. Please feel free to email me. If you're a little bit old school and you still perhaps prefer to um, come in and see me in person so I can give you a hard copy application, you won't be able to enter the Admin A building without a booking or an appointment. In the chat box, I've now included a booking link. If you want to come and see me in the Admin A building, uh, and you can use that and you can schedule an appointment, but frankly, you absolutely don't need to do that unless you're looking for additional information. Um, so you are welcome to then contact me via email and um, I can proceed with the registration and you'll be half from there. Okay. Shivan, thank you so much uh, for sharing this. Uh, really appreciate it. You're welcome. Um, there's one more thing that we need to share, and uh, Estelle, that, that will be brief. What, uh, uh, it's, it's your teaching blocks. Now, it's just a matter of, uh, I don't know in, uh, in how much detail you would like to, to do that, Estelle, but I think it's a matter, but please, you, uh, you draft the, the schedule. <laughs> so uh, Estelle is definitely the expert. Estelle, I'm just going to go through. This is the, the booklet that we refer to. If you haven't seen it, this is it. Um, all the faces, and there's a question mark. Next to my face, you know why. <laughs> uh, anyway. Estelle, I'm just uh, going through. There we go. Dr. Nacha, I do want to correct something. Please do so. People have three times now <laughs> said incorrectly. Um, I just think it's because uh, we were so rigid in the past. 
with students that had to finish their 10 credit modules and then had to do their research assignment. Um, but it's also because um, they worked totally on their own and then had to do the research assignment afterwards. But we have changed it and I will check in with my colleagues and also with Shivan. Um, students who register for one year duration, you may register for your research assignment now already because you are going to start with support from colleagues like Lynn Hansen, like Ayla, mm -hmm. um, your lecturers, your supervisors. You're going to work, you may work on your research assignment already now from the start of the year. We're not applying that rule as we had in the past. I don't have to issue you a letter. You may register for your 10 credit models as well as your research assignment, if of, if of course you have you, you plan to do that this year. You have an option, as you know, our program has an option of there's a one year duration and a two year duration. So if maybe in your personal circumstances, it is easier for you uh, or you may not have the time to do everything this year, you may register for the two-year duration and only do the 10 credit modules this year and do your research assignment next year. But for those of you who have more capacity and um, don't know what to do in the evenings, maybe yeah. you, you can do all of them. But then you, but you have to, really, you have to know this course is a postgraduate course. It is a lot of work. So please don't um, yeah, think of this. Um, you must have each evening. You will have to put in a few hours. Um, this is not. This is not undergraduate. Um, you can't go to bars, but I think you're a bit older as well, so maybe it's okay. But but this is very important that you you have to to be aware that the, this is as you will see from the reading list. There's a lot of reading to be done and and. Um, People sometimes underestimate that. Um, so please, please be aware of it, that it is a lot of work and you have to work from the start already. Um, but we hope you are with everybody's support and with your, your you doing your work, that, that it will, will be okay. So you, so you may register, I, I will after this just send an email again to all the colleagues. But I must tell you, it is because we were very strict the past few years and nobody may continue with an assignment without having a letter from me in the end. So I think the colleagues are still in that group or what you call it. Yeah. So that is something new. We are all getting um, accustomed to this new setup. Um, I think it's definitely a much better program that we had in the past. There's much more support for the students than in the past. Um, yeah, so so yeah, just just be with this is also also new to us, but we hope that everything is fine. Okay, um, then um, today was this. I'm going to um, um, Simba Pondani will will do the Sunlearn workshops with you tomorrow and Thursday, and I will let Simba just quickly. Um, pop in um, maybe after I've spoken so that you just see who he is. For those of you who will be attending in person, it will be in your computer lab that is just next to the library. Um, yeah, so you can, it's from two o'clock till half past four. Um, Sunlearn, you have heard about Sunlearn numerous times today. Um, it's very important that you know how to work on Sunlearn. Uh, all the students can do it, so it's not that difficult, but you just have to know where it is, how to log in, what you use, and you have to be registered to, to work on Sunday. So, um, okay, um, that's that. Then next week, oh yes, and then for this, I will still send you the invites. As students are registering all the time, I, I have old lists and new lists, I'm not even sure who's where. <laughs> anymore but i will send you um the the invite to that for those who will be attending online i will send an invite today um yes somewhere today uh, for for those two workshops but of course it's, it's i i prefer you know face to face you see the person you are there you are working together and so on next week and uh, for this i will also send out invites a bit later in the week um, this is we, we're going to work on the research assignments and we, uh, Professor Lynn Hansen 
and Ailam will will start um, doing workshops on. You will see the the research methodology, <laughs> academic writing, selection of resources, and so on. Um, you this will be part of the workshop that you're also giving to the in depths. Yeah, so you will be part of a bigger group there. And um, yeah, so that is that. And then after that, there's some time. If you haven't, don't have a, a, a um, uh, yeah, we, we, we're going to meet the, sorry, we're going to meet the, the, the less super, um, just have an information session on, um, on supervision and on the assignment module. Um, and um, just, you know, what, what, what might be what possibilities what focuses are they what's different titles maybe um but you you yeah that will be a discussion there and then um you can start in that time you can also start if you know what you're going to do um you can either contact the coordinator of that module and others i'm going to work on this focus um uh, who will maybe be the um the supervisor will work with me um, um so he will give you or she will give you guidance on that and then of course we're going to start with the block sessions um, we know that we do have uh, students that that uh, work full time um, so we have to have recordings ready for those and we'll upload as I, I think it's on Sunday you upload your recordings yes so I don't do that so I'm <laughs> so yeah so, um, but uh, students also want to remind you if you see the lecture has not pressed that record button just tell them because you very easy forget to do that. So please, yeah, just put up your hands and put press record. So then we have four four weeks for each of the of the disciplines. You'll see here. So can yes. we just mention that for most of those blocks, there will be three ways to uh, participate. In person is always best choice. Yes. You can ask your questions, you can read the room, then there will be a live MS teams. Yes. At the same time, like now, yes. and then a recording. And, yeah. The recording is obviously just a fail site. You can't be there. Yeah. Because obviously, if you have a question, you can ask all you want. That recording is going ahead. It was recorded three hours ago, right? Yeah. So try, try to attend in person if you can at all. Yes, exactly. Yeah. yeah. But if somebody responds when you ask a, report, a question to that recording, it's from a higher house. <laughs> <laughs> oh my colleagues okay so um, in the week of 16 to 20 may we um we still arranged that but we were thinking of having that uh, um in, in within the disciplines that they arrange a, a session with with the students that registered for assignments in that subject so that you can just make a little presentation on where are you and what have you done up to now and um, so that and people can give feedback, your peers can give, give feedback, or the supervisors, uh, supervisors can give feedback, and um, it's always good you know, just to get other perspectives on, 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 on what you're doing. Um, this is a nice break. Um, you know, it's undergraduate students, it's exam time and everything, so it's a bit busy for, for lecturers to also continue with this. And then we start, then they, this is for students. The students may register from July on if they haven't had registered for now. But of course, this will only be for students. They will only be able to register for those three 10 credit models, not a research assignment anymore. But they can do missiology, New Testament, systematic. So if this is for them, and we will have a little orientation. You don't have to attend that again. Hopefully, you know everything by today. And then there's a lastly, Missiology, New Testament, and Systematic. And then again, we have a, again a presentation with your more final version of your of your research assignment, and again getting um, feedback. And then we have the two submission dates for your research assignment. Um, if you maybe you're on track and you're going to finish this year and you want to graduate December, um, you submit. Um, 1 November 2022 um, and that will be on Sunland it will be via turn it in and that's a plagiarism tool that says for uh, give you a similarity report um, there will be two options there's a, a play pin 
where you can submit and we can say, oh, my word, it's 20 percent. Maybe I must do something or, or and ask your supervisor. Don't just go to the final submission one. First, go to your supervisor and tell, listen, this is the report I have received. What must we do? And then you submit at the final. There's a link that will say final submissions. Um, uh, we'll still think of the name, <laughs> Lucy McCoy Jason or whatever. And then it goes for the students who's going to maybe don't finish by that time. You have time up to the 15th of January 2023, if and but then you're going to graduate in April. You don't pay any extra fees or something. It's just rolling over. You submit by 15 Jan and you graduate April. If that maybe works better for you, don't you? Like a Christmas <laughs> oh, <laughs> um, I think that is all that I wanted to say. Um, I think if we can have um, Simba there now. Simba, I think you are still somewhere. Ah. Hola, hola. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, colleagues and uh, uh, to the PGD 2022 cohort. May you have a wonderful academic year. So briefly, I'm just going to talk about the workshops that we are going to have on the 25th of January. That is tomorrow afternoon, 2 o'clock um, to 16.30. That is 4.30 uh, p.m. And uh, we are going to have another session which will be more practical on the 27th of January. So basically, we are going to talk about the interface that we use, the digital platform called Sunlearn. You heard um, the, um, uh, uh, many people talking about, or many lecturers uh, talking about Sunlearn, and now Estelle was just talking about Playpen, turn it in, and it all sounds, you know, like it's... Um, uh, a, a foreign language or she was speaking in tongues. <laughs> uh, don't worry, it's not uh, Pentecostalism. Uh, so those names will be familiarizing ourselves, getting acquainted to the digital platform. And it's a major platform that we use at Stellenbosch University. So I would encourage you to be part of it uh, because um, you may know the modules, you may know uh, practical theology, you may know systematic or Old Testament, you may be coming from an affluent university, but uh, Stellenbosch University has, has got a unique platform that it has where lecturers communicate and uh, disseminate information to the student body and also students can also upload and interact and do stuff. And that is the platform. So the key is the platform will give you a head start. Um, you know, uh, I remember when I did my PG dip, you know, um, I lost a lot of time because I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know what I was looking for. I didn't know what is playpen. I didn't know what is Kennedy. I didn't know what is um, Moody. I didn't know uh, what is uh, Zitoro, you know, or Mendeley and how to use them. So if you are going to attend the workshops, I am going to explain in uh, the best simple way that can you can understand and uh, we see how it goes. So it is uh, very crucial and uh, of utmost importance that uh, the 2022 uh, PGD court attend uh, the workshop starting tomorrow. I would encourage you because it is a major contributor to your performance, to your submissions and everything that is uh, going to happen in your academic year. So have a good day, Feather, and thank you, Estelle. Simo, thank you so much. Uh, uh, I'm sure they look forward to meeting you in person with the workshop. So, uh, uh, colleagues, uh, um, this is it in terms of the information we want to supply you with. Let me just say before I open the floor, and then we can go a little bit over the time. Uh, I mean, we scheduled up, but it's important for us to answer your questions. The PG DIP, uh, um, uh, and I, if I may, I want to quote Michael Jackson, uh, this is it. This is the program for you to come into theology. This is genuinely it. It's a wonderful program, an opportunity for wherever you're coming from, whatever subject, whatever discipline, 
to come into the orbit. Secondly, this is it if you want to do post graduate studies. So it is a wonderful uh, 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 program. And as Estelle has said, um, don't underestimate. It is the AQF level eight post graduate program. This is a program we want to invite you, welcome you into theology, but also equip you for post -parents. Okay, enough said. The floor is open for those online. You're welcome to ask any question. And before I continue, Estelle, thank you so much for setting this all up. The schedule you see, the PTWC, everything, all the mistakes is me. Everything that you see that's working perfectly well is Estelle. So Estelle, thank you so much. And I want to just make a side note. I mean, Estelle is, is the administrative officer in our Old and New Testament. Uh, so, so please direct the, the questions for our department to Estelle, uh, but for, for PTM and SDE related questions, please direct it to the, to the administrative offices. All the, 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 the details are on there. But if it's a general question, you're welcome to contact me, copy in uh, Estelle. I don't want to overburden Estelle with all, I mean, she is um, <clears throat> running this building for the most part. I mean, so just, just take note of that. Uh, for those online as well, uh, uh, please take note. But the floor is open. Please, your questions. Please. Um, I just have one technical, technical issue. Uh, I suppose for me, uh, I'm a study student, so marks for me is very important. Sure. So um, I just want to get some clarity on it, right? So to pass this course, check it, right? We do what we did part of everything with the motivation of our people. Right, but if you want to obviously achieve um, a good market for the good community in the MPH program, then you would need different, uh, a good, uh, different level of market, right? Yes. So then it would be 60% every of all of your mark and then 65% of your research side. Yes. That's great. I, th I think that is correct. Uh, uh, so, so, so that is the the requirements within the PG tip. But that does not necessarily override a requirement for an MPH. For example, let's say you want to specialize in uh, MPH New Testament, then there's additional requirements, language, uh, uh, etc. So, so what I'm saying is absolutely, if I'm not mistaken, Estelle, that is, I, if I recall correctly, the, the requirement. But in uh, in collaboration with whatever requirement there is for the MTH you want to specialize in, if that makes sense. Uh, but then also then if you if you want to write your research assignment, yes. you also need to attain a certain mark if you want to. So I don't want to make sure of that sixty percent, but just just to say also we prefer if you do your research assignment in the discipline. In which you're going to work. So, if you're wanting to work in systematic theology, make sure your part B is in that discipline. Um, and then, just as Peter said, the, the, the third thing just to remember is that uh, the departments obviously evaluate which students they can take in based on each uh, department's capacity. So, if we have two lecturers who can supervise ethics and there are 20 applicants, we're obviously going to go for those students whose marks are a little bit higher or who are working on issues related to our context that they're interested in. So it is well worth when you're working on your research assignment just to, to work quite closely with your supervisor. Yes. She or he will be able to tell you, uh, you should be aiming for this and this is a theme that might fit better. Uh, yeah. That's, that's crucial. We've got a hand online. The floor is yours, please. Um, hey everyone, um, I just want to have clarity around the exam dates. So some of the uh, module groups or discipline groups mentioned that they will have an uh, exam or they won't have an exam. Um, but I wanted to know, like, would it, did that also change in terms of the restructuring where the 
is only one exam and not multiple exam opportunities throughout the year. So my question is if there's going to be multiple exam opportunities if we're writing an exam for that specific module or only one opportunity per module. Uh, thank you so much for that question. Let me let me answer this and, and, and Estelle, you can. So I, I want us to, to just move away from the term exam because that has been the the the. Uh, predominantly the category we work with. I mean, did you pass or not? Did you succeed with the program? Uh, and that is that you pass the exam. So there will be assessments. There will be assessments in each module. And those assessments are determined by the lecturers. Uh, so within certain criteria, we're not allowed to either pass or fail both based on a assessment. So there needs to be more than one assessment. But that can be in the traditional sense of the word, an exam, if you will. But let's, let's move away from these terms. It's an assessment. We need to assess your knowledge uh, uh, and your process uh, that, that you're in. So, so there's different assessments for different modules. That's how I would want to answer that question. Uh, Dion, if you want to add, Estelle, uh, that's how I have it. Um, and I think that's been confirmed by, by the university's the structures. There's no prerequisite in terms of how you need to assess should there be one exam, but at least assessments more than one. And that can be in various forms, quizzes, whatever, assignments, whatever the case may be. Peter, just to say, I think yeah. what, Jamie, just uh, your sure. question um, uh, is, means that unlike last year where there might have been four opportunities to oh, do sure, systematic sure. theology, uh, from now on, you will be assessed during that block a period of four weeks on systematic theology and you have to complete your assessment successfully during that period. If you don't do that, you'll be registered for the module and complete it during its block yes. in the next year. Exactly. So you exactly. just need to make sure if you have outstanding modules that you register for those modules and you're available to do those assessments during the, the prescribed week on the timetable. Yeah. Thank you, Dion. So, so that is more uh, directed at your at your question. So, there's not a so in the old uh, model a second opportunity, if you will, during the year, but there's assessment opportunities, uh, if you will, in that that uh, block of of lectures. Does that answer your question? Yeah. Question from me. Yes, yeah, sure. Please go ahead. Peter, um, will the assessments be online? So those who don't come in for in-person lectures, would we be able to do all the assessments remotely? Uh, uh, thank you for that question. I think it's fair to say that um, uh, the assessment possibilities will not only be face to face. Uh, it, 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 it's a it's a virtual. There's a virtual online uh, uh, component to that. So so definitely. So I can say this with almost 100% certainty that you can uh, uh, be assessed online, so to speak. Thank you. Thank you. Peter, your hand is up, please. Um, it uh, was Peter. No. Oh, it's it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, but that's a good thing. I. Eh? That's a good thing. <laughs> Is it? Please, please. Um, this program caters for the for the people that do it full time. So the people that do it sort of um, part time. So with the research assignment, where do we come in with the whole thing? Yes, yeah. So will we then get orientation and yes. focus on, and we yes. check some of the choices done only at the beginning of next year? Yes. Yes. So whatever slots are here for the research, that only applies to that. Exactly. Yes. 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 Thank you for for that.
Any any other question, please? Peter, is that a new end? Oh, it's an old end. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so, Peter, the blocks lectures in on certain towns, like will the tower the lecture stay the same throughout the block. So does it block in lectures and um, sorry I'm just it's lectures. It's, okay. Yes. And yes. what tower those? Um, what tower? Do we know what you're doing? Okay. Yeah. The lecture is inside itself, okay. and it will be in the module framework. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm putting PDF, PDF will be out soon. Yeah. Okay. So, so yeah. Yeah. Part, of the, part of the requirement is for you to have access to a module framework. Oh, okay. It spells out in detail. Uh, the outcomes, the objectives of the module, the assessments, time of, of, of lectures, etc. And, and that will be on Sunday. Okay. Yeah, just, just to mention, obviously, the, I can hear some anxiety here. <laughs> uh, those who are part time, obviously, that's why it is a hybrid program. If you can make it to the lectures scheduled for your meetings, obviously, you're interested to do that. Be here for as many of them as you can. Uh, but if you can't be here, then that's, and then you have access to the internet and you're free, then you can log on via Teams. If, if even that's not possible, then you download the recording after. The only thing that's not flexible are those assessments. If they say to you it's due at midnight yep. on the 14th of March, that's, that's not going to work. So if you say what they intended, so will the lectures be presented, what they actually come and attend? Absolutely. Yes. So this is this is uh, the new component, if you will, uh, uh, of of the PG the program from this year uh, onwards. Yeah. So there's actual lectures on the material and and content of a, of a certain subject. And just to say, we will uh, uh, those recordings. Uh, it will go through a. a depending on the lecturer, of course, but we will assist to a large degree making sure that it's uh, uh, data light, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's edited well and we'll make it uh, available. So you have an optimal, an optimal experience if you do listen to it uh, uh, after hours in asynchronous mode. Any other questions? Oh, yes, please, please. Okay, please. Uh, I want to ask you my scenario, and then that also depends on the geography parts and practical technology. Yes. I want to ask uh, for the lecture, uh, in the lecture, there are certain, uh, certain models like practical technology. Yes. Is it needed to be for me? Because it's part of my way for the second part. I will uh, specialize in practical theology and Islam. So, will it be needed? If you pass it to you. Yeah. 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 I just want to know uh, since they had the option to base the previous one, um, will we? Have the um, opportunity to register half now in the others next year, or will we register some of the all the subjects and things next year? It was two years, three years. Yes. Okay. So, uh, I, uh, uh, so, ideally speaking, uh, that uh, uh, as we thought about the program in terms of two years. The first year you complete your modules, your six modules, and the second year you complete your your thesis assignment, the 60 credit module, the specialized module. That being said, and I think we had that discussion and that was a bit vague at that point. So we need to just clarify whether it is indeed possible to register for, let's say, four modules to next year plus your assignment. I don't think it's impossible. I, I'm not sure. So we need to just clarify. I don't know if 
Seven is left. Okay, but we'll need we'll clarify that. I think that's a very important question. Wonderful, wonderful. No, it's wonderful to have you. Any any other questions? Those online? Oh, this is peace. Uh, yes. So, uh, so um, all, of, all of my questions are more related to um, part B. And yes. um, it's also for me, not a bit confusing, so sometimes I, I find a little bit of um, gray areas, especially now that a lot of things in the part A has, has changed. Sure, uh, sure. So now I'm just, I'm just trying to connect the dots with the dots of how does sure. part B now change at all? Uh, so in part B, do you you, know, do you only have your initial paper that you have to write, or is there any other additional um, oral exam that I know that, 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 that has to be? And I know that is uh, part specific. Um, I don't know, probably not somebody from the practical theology side at, at the moment that can answer me, but would there be any like um, oral exams required from the on Exactly as, as far as my understanding, so that's a, 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 the part of the program that has not really changed uh, uh, as much. As far as I understand it, there's two components of part B. One component is an oral examination. The second part is uh, a research assignment. Again, ideally, you would want to prescribe the books on which you will do your oral assessment and exam, those books to be used for your research assignment. I mean, that's the idea. Okay. And that's, a, that's why it's so important to, to keep on engaging with your supervisor. Make sure you're on the same frequency in terms of your planning. Uh, in, in my case, and I think Valdu is here, my students, uh, you know, this is from the very start. We, we, we plan the process. What do you need? What do you want to specialize in? And that specialization, the, the prescribed books for your model, becomes part of your research assignment. You don't need to read an additional book, for example. You can, you can incorporate it in your research assignment as, a, as an idea. Yeah. yeah, because as you, as you mentioned um, previously, it's what about capacity as well? Yes, sure. You want to start with conversation like this, you want to be ideally you want someone that's going to sit you in your research time now, or should it just be in your master's? Sure. Um, so it's no point really if you are um, going to talk about your research time, but for the master's the next year, they might not really be capacity. So, yeah. so thank you for highlighting sure, that. Sure. So I, I just want to say, in terms of this, another hand, in terms of new test, specializing in New Testament and Old Testament, I think I can say with, with uh, a, a reasonable amount of certainty that for uh, MTH in New Testament, you need at least uh, uh, Greek on, on secondary level. That be, and also, uh, it applies to Old Testament, uh, you need a second year Hebrew. That being said, we have admitted students and they do a second year Greek simultaneously while they are enrolled for MTH in New Testament or Old Testament. Just wanted to say that. There's a, oh, goodness. There's another hand. Is there an old or new hand? Uh, the floor is yours. There's a new hand. Thanks. Uh, I'm assuming it's my hand. It's a new hand. Um, just two questions. I see you've got supervision guidance scheduled for the 7th to the 12th of February. Is that a group? Uh, a, a session, or is that sort of individual session scheduled with the with the supervisor, your, you know, your supervisor? The second question is: Is it did I hear you correctly uh, saying that the assessments take place for for, for module, let's say practical theology, being the first one here, take place exclusively between those dates of the 14th of February and the 11th of March, or does it happen? You know, you sort of submit something after that date, or that kind of thing. 
Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for the question. If I heard you correctly, your first question is, uh, uh, it will the sessions in the beginning will be group sessions, and as far as my understanding, it will be group sessions. Uh, uh, in fact, you will be exposed to, to students that's doing a different course, also postgraduate, that are also in the process of writing a research assignment, etc. So you will be grouped together, which is wonderful. Uh, it just makes the knowledge production process uh, a more vibrant one. Your second question, those schedules are fixed. So the schedules for practical theology, missiology, Old Testament, New Testament is what it is. That is the schedule and there's no additional uh, time uh, available for, for modules. And that is for the part A, the, 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 the 10 credit modules. So I hope that answers your question. Those are the schedules. There's no other time to, to, to participate other than that, other than what is stipulated in the in the schedule. Peter, so just, just to clarify, uh, the, the lecturers for that module uh, may not set uh, an assessment for you outside of their jails. Mm -hmm. So if they're going to give you a test, it's during that time. If you're writing an essay, it's during that time. You're not going to have to borrow time from somewhere to do your... Yes. But, uh, I hope you, you heard this, and a, a, a very important uh, a, a remark is that you will be assessed during uh, your block uh, lectures. That, that's the, the time. You will be done with that module after the three weeks. Are you allowed to do any of your assignments or oral assistance in the class? I am sure that is a possibility. Again, it depends on the lecturer and the supervisor. Now, I would want, I, assuming that your lecturer is only capable in conversing in English, of course, that will be a, 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 a pose a challenge. Not something that cannot be overcome, but I mean, a, a challenge. And I, w I want to encourage you without, without you know, uh, 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 being prescriptive in terms of, of this, but uh, um, if, you, if, you, if you could, if it's in your ability to, to do it in a second language, that being English, and I'm not, I'm not saying you must do it in English, but just in terms of the future, you know, if you want to specialize in, in, in it further, I mean, it's not a, it's not unwise to, to, to go that route. But of course, I'm not, I don't want to be prescriptive. Uh, all I'm saying is, if your lecturer is only competent in a certain language, uh, that will pose a, a, a challenge, obviously. But not, it, it can be overcome, I'm sure. Is that it? So it's a point of consideration for a registration. If you register for the year, you don't have to register for each module. So if you register for the year and then you put it together, or do you know any you, you, I, I think you register for the program which entails six 10 credit modules and the specialization <laughs> module, but it's still you can create. I think the letter that Shivan has sent you, okay. which is type of the modules. Okay, oh, thank you. And if you communicate it, it's one year or two years at the course of the Maya, then the research module was shown by the capture. So just take that as the communication is Thank you. And we need to just clarify if it's indeed possible to only register for a certain amount of modules this year, if you do it over two years, we will verify and clarify that. Now, um, that is a thank you for your time. Thanks for showing up uh, face to face. Uh, uh, looking forward to journeying with you. Uh, Estelle, once again, thank you for, and, and Dion, thank you for, for your help. Uh, you can give yourself a Thank you for connecting online. Have a good uh, afternoon. Uh, we will see you soon. Thank you. Thank you. All the best. Thank you. I'm a godly.